De Broglie's hypothesis. According to the wave particle duality, the electron has a dual nature, just like electromagnetic waves. An electron interacts with matter as a particle. The evidence comes from Newtonian mechanics. An electron travels through space as a wave. The evidence comes from the diffraction of electrons. This wave property of electron was first of all postulated by Louis de Broglie based on his question that if photons exhibit wave and particle properties, would all matter do so as well? Einstein appreciated his brilliant idea and this hypothesis put forward by Louis de Broglie was eventually confirmed by Davison and Germer in 1927. These two scientists have experimentally shown electrons diffraction by single crystals of nickel which act like a diffraction grating and measure the wavelength of electrons by measuring the angles they were deflected by. Therefore, de Broglie's theory of matter having wave properties was correct. He associated wave with matter. De Broglie's quantum mechanical wavelength associated with a particle is a characteristic of particles only and other material objects. And therefore, the waves associated with electrons are referred to as matter waves. De Broglie on the basis of these revolutionary findings was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1929 and his work marked the beginning of wave mechanics. It must be noted here that de Broglie's theory suggested that the wavelength of electron waves was very small, about the size of an atom. So the separation of the slits in a diffraction grating for electrons would have to be of the order of the size of an atom. As we have studied that electron diffraction is an evidence for wave nature of particles, we can reproduce the results of Davison and Germer in laboratory as well using the electron tube. So this is an electron tube in which the electrons from the heated filament are accelerated to high speeds by the large potential difference between the negative terminal cathode and positive terminal anode. Now these accelerated electron beam passes through a thin sample of polycrystalline graphite. It is made up of many tiny crystals like this, each of which consists of large number of carbon atoms arranged in uniform atomic layers. The electrons emerge from the graphite film and produce diffraction rings on the phosphor screen. This fluorescent screen is phosphor screen. Now, these diffraction rings produced are similar to those produced by light, a wave passing through a small circular hole. The electrons are diffracted by the carbon atoms and the spacing between the layers of carbon atoms. The atomic layers of carbon behave like a diffraction grating with many slits. The electrons show diffraction effects because their de Broglie wavelength lambda is similar to the spacing between the atomic layers. Now, in this experiment, it's worth mentioning that the phosphor screen, this fluorescent screen, also gives a flash of light for each electron that hits it. These flashes build up to give the diffraction pattern. De Broglie's wavelength. Consider a particle of mass m moving with velocity v. De Broglie's. Consider De Broglie's wavelength. Suppose a particle of mass m is moving with a velocity, then de Broglie's wavelength is given by lambda equal to h over mv. We have studied earlier for photons, we use Planck's equation, which is E is equal to h nu. For the wave behavior of subatomic particles like electrons, we always use de Broglie's wavelength, where lambda is equal to h over mv, h is Planck's constant, v is the velocity of the particle, m is the relativistic mass and lambda will be measured in meters. According to Einstein's mass energy equation, e is equal to mc square as these two equations have energy on the left hand side, so we will equate right hand sides, h nu will be equal to mc square or mc will be equal to h nu over c. Now according to famous wave equation c is equal to nu lambda. 
where nu is the frequency of incident photons please do not confuse this letter nu with v v is the velocity of the particle nu is the frequency of the photons so we will replace nu over c by 1 over lambda according to this equation so mc will be equal to h over lambda as mc is the product of mass and velocity it will be denoted by momentum and letter p h over lambda therefore lambda will be equal to h over p now in order to find out the units in which lambda will be measured we will again look at this equation lambda is equal to h over p h is planck's constant its value is 6.63 .6 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds so h is measured in joules into seconds divided by mass is product of uh, momentum is product of mass and velocity mass in, is measured in kilograms and velocity in meters per second as 1 joule is equal to 1 newton into meter therefore we will replace j with n into m times s divided by kilogram into meter per second again 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second square into m into s divided by kilogram into meter per second this mm will be cancelled out kilogram kilogram will be cancelled out so lambda is left with m s minus 2 again when this s minus 1 is moved up its power become positive so 1 plus 1 will be 2 so s minus 2 and s plus 2 will also be cancelled out so units of lambda will be in meters now this de broglie's equation applies to all matter anything that has mass even to people now we will see an example and come to know why we do not notice wave behavior in people suppose a person whose weight is 70 kg m is 70 kg it is moving at a speed of 22.5 meters per second these are arbitrary values just we suppose and it's running at a speed of 2.5 meter per second through an opening of width 0 0.90 meter now for diffraction to take place this is the basic condition of diffraction that width of opening should be comparable with the wavelength of incident wave now we will apply de broglie's equation lambda is equal to h over mv again h will be 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 divided by m is 70 kg into 2.5 after calculations this lambda comes out to be about 0 0.04 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 so lambda is of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 34 meters which is far less than this width of opening this is the reason that no diffraction effects would be observed as this lambda is very very small as compared with the width of the gap people cannot be diffracted through everyday gaps hence wave model is not used to describe the behavior of people people are regarded as large particles the planck's constant h is the same that appears in the equation e equal to h nu for the energy of a photon it is fascinating how the planck's constant h is entangled or interlinked with the behavior of both matter as waves that is of electrons and electromagnetic waves as particles that is photons now de broglie's concept interprets electron in bohr's model as standing waves de broglie realized that the electrons orbiting the nucleus is considered as a circular standing wave in this way that consists of an integral number of wavelength fitting exactly within the orbit see these waves 
so electrons are considered as standing waves circular standing waves therefore their wavelength lambda will be equal to 2 pi r over n 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle and n is the shell number like n is 3 n is 4 as we move away from the nucleus shell number increases this means that the angular momentum of each electron is quantized as Neil Bohr postulated the electron as being a particle that orbits the nucleus in quantized orbits. The answer of the question what keeps electrons in their orbits is based on stationary wave ideas that can predict, predict the spectra of atoms accurately. Now as electrons are more massive than photons, they have smaller wavelength and this is why electron microscopes have a better resolution than microscopes that use light. Diffraction of particle has many uses like to find the structure of matter, the arrangement of atoms in metals and other materials using diffraction of slow moving electrons and to find out the spacing between them as well and the structure of complex molecules such as DNAs. High speed electrons from particle accelerators have been used to determine the diameter of atomic nuclei and to investigate the internal structure of the nucleus. Thank you for watching.